Usually in these videos, I have prepared what I'm gonna show you. Today, that is not the case. I don't know how we're going to solve this problem. Today, I wanna to tell you about how I learn TypeScript. Obviously, you can use great blog posts and videos, but the thing that works most effectively for me is actually getting into some code and learning. And I find the best way to do that is to see a cool technique or pattern in maybe someone else's TypeScript or just even in another language and try and reproduce that in my own code. And so that's what we're gonna do today. The TypeScript that I wanna try to reproduce in this video is part of Keysily. This is a really cool TypeSafe query builder. And if we take a look at the docs and go to the playground here, what you can see is a small example of how we can use this query builder to create this query. I'm not even interested in the query so much as the TypeScript part of this. As you can see, we're saying select from this table and then we're selecting some columns here. And if I hover over person, you can see that we get a strongly typed shape out of here where we have ID and first name as the two columns that I've selected. So right away, that is pretty cool behavior. Also cool is if I go to add a new column here, you can see that I actually get autocomplete for the possible columns. We could choose age. And now if we hover over person, we have that age showing up here. Even cooler though, I think, is I can alias these things just like you could in SQL. So I could say first name as, let's do first name in camel case. And if I hover over person, now we have first name mapped like that. Usually in these videos, I have prepared what I'm gonna show you. Today, that is not the case. I don't know how we're going to solve this problem, but let's head over to the TypeScript playground and see what we can come up with. Obviously, we're not gonna build a whole query builder. I think what I want to do essentially is be able to select a particular table, get some autocomplete on the columns then that I'm selecting from that table. And if we can get to aliasing them, that would be amazing. So I think the first type we're gonna need here is a set of tables that we can reference. We've got our person table here here, and let's say that it has an ID and then we'll have first name. So the tables that we could possibly select from, let's create a type for that. And we have table names, and this is just gonna be a key of tables. Right now we just have person. Of course, if we had multiple tables, this would be a union of those keys. Let's create our function here. And I'm gonna wrap some of the behavior that we see in Keysley here into a single function where you put your table name first and then an array of our columns second and we get this shape back. So let's go ahead and say declare function. I'm using the declare keyword because I don't want to actually implement the entire function, just the signature. Let's start by talking about the arguments here. Well, I think we know that we want the table name as the first argument and we want the columns that we want to select as the second argument. Now, we need to actually give these some types and I think our table name here, let's go ahead with a generic that we're gonna call name. name extends table names. Then let's start with the basic version of this columns needs to extend this set of keys, right? The keys of our table. And so we can say that the type for columns here is going to extend key of tables at name. And so now we can say our columns here is an array of columns. All right, so this is the very first and basic version of this select. If we call select, we can see that as the first argument, we really only have one option, which is person. And then we have an array for a second one here. We can do ID and we can get first name and those both autocomplete. But if we were gonna do something that doesn't exist, we do get a type error for that, which is great. Last name is not assignable to a union of first name and ID. Now to make sure this actually works as we would expect, let's add another table here, which we could call product. And let's have a string name and maybe we have a created at date. We can select a product instead. And you can see with product, if we use first name, you can see it's not assignable to ID, name, or created at. So it is specifically looking for the columns that we have in our product table. We've finished the first goal of this little project, which is to have a strongly typed connection between the table name and the columns of that table. But I think when we wanna start looking at being able to alias the columns, that is gonna be a little bit trickier because what we wanna do is not just take these keys, but we also wanna be able to accept some version of key space as space some other string. And so that brings us into, I think we're gonna have to do this with template literals. Let's maybe create um, a new type here that I'm gonna call SQL alias, better name to be determined. Essentially, I think we want this to be in the format string as string. I guess what I wanna do is make sure that this first string here always matches a column from the table that we are looking at. So I'm probably gonna wanna pass it a set of column names. Now, this is gonna complain that it's not of the available types. So we're gonna say this extends, uh, this definitely extends a string array. Actually, no, no, not string array. It just extends a string, because this should be a union. 
that's how that should work. Yeah, okay. So that's a string. And then this also needs to be a string, but we kind of want to return what is coming out of here. So do we have to say we have another type T that extends string, I think. And what we want to do is say, does T, if T extends this string like this, and let's infer new name, then we want to return the new name. Otherwise, we want to return never. I think this is what we want to do. I'm not sure. Let's give this a quick test run. So if we say our possible column names are ID or uh, first underscore name, and we give it the string first underscore name as first name camel case, then X should equal first name camel case. Okay. Nice. I still need a way to determine that column here is basically a set of all these possible keys, or it's the set of like SQL aliases. This is kind of what I want to be able to do. I want to say this column extends uh, this set or this set. It's got to be one of all of these things. I think we built the wrong type. Type, uh, we'll call this one SQL alias, and it looks like it's just gonna take a union of column names. So we're gonna copy this right here. And I think what we essentially wanna do is map over this and create these possible types. Yes, so this is a union, and we wanna make sure we distribute over this union, right? So we're gonna say if column names uh, extends column names, what we can do is we're gonna return uh, column names space as space string, otherwise never. This should be basically a type that will create these aliased versions for us. And we can give this a quick test here. We should be able to pass it just ID. And if we hover over X, we get ID as string. Perfect. ID or first underscore name. And we get ID as string or first name as string. Okay, excellent. This is this is, uh, this is is much better. I was a little bit worried that I wasn't sure where we were going with that. Okay, so now that we have this SQL alias, let's create one more type here. This is gonna be a set of all possible columns. This is going to take our column names and it's gonna be two things. It's gonna be column names or it's gonna be SQL aliases of column names. And so now what we should be able to do is replace SQL alias here in our test with columns. And so now X here should be ID, first name, ID as string or first First name is string. Perfect. So those are the possible columns that we could select. Now let's go ahead and put columns right in here. Uh, if we do this, we do have an error here. Let's see. A key of table of name does not satisfy the constraint string. Oh, okay, right. So when we do key of a particular thing here, looks like this could also be number or symbol. I think we can just intersect that with string to say, no, really, we just care about the string possibilities here. If we come back down to our examples here, we should be able to see that, I don't know if we'll get autocomplete on it, but we should be able to create alias columns. But if we do first name as, and then we call this a first name like that, we can see that this works as a column name. Now, if we do something that breaks the pattern, you can see that this is not assignable to type columns of ID or first name, right? So it knows what the right pattern is. It accepts the right pattern. We only get this correct if we get the right pattern. Cool. We are very close to getting this working. I love that we now have these aliased columns. The only thing we have to do now is a return value. So let's create our return value here. We can call it, I think, select return. That makes sense. Um, I also think we're going to need to take a generic. So what is this generic value? Well, we don't really need the table name. Actually, that's not true. We do need the table because one thing we're going to need to be able to do is index into these things and figure out what are the correct return types. So we're going to need to know what is the name of the table and then what are the columns that were selected. That means I think we need both this table name and we need our set of columns. The name is simple. We can just pass name in there like that. Um, column, well, this column type is all of our possible types. Um, I think we need like column as an array. That's interesting. Let's set up one more generic here that we'll call columns. And this is going to say, we're gonna say this extends an array of column, and then we'll pass that as our second argument to select return. So it's time to write this select return. So we have select return. We know we're gonna need some generics. I wanna narrow this down a little bit. So I'm actually gonna move this back to a place where we just have two generics here, because really I think these are gonna be the exact same thing. We need to validate in select return as well. The name comes from table names and columns comes from there as well. As you can see, now we are type checking here successfully. For the moment, let's just say name equals name and uh, columns equals select columns. And let's take a look at what person is. So if we hover over person, uh, we can see we're just getting this select return shape. I kind of want that to flatten. 
Um, so what we can do is let's use a quick flat utility here where this can basically take a type and we want to map over each K in T and let's just do K, uh, T of K. I think that should work. Uh, sorry, we need to go over the key of T. There we go. So this is a quick flat utility. And now what we can do is let's create a type here and we'll call this P1 equals flat uh, type of person. Okay, cool. So we have our name, which is person. We have our columns, which is critically, specifically the columns we selected, which is ID and first name as first name. So we have all the data that we need in order to create our return shape. If we look at P2, we have product as the table name, and then we have created at and name as product name. Excellent. This is interesting because we have an array of this union. Maybe I was wrong about needing to move the array into here. Let's do a quick test. If I remove that and I put that there, and then we're gonna remove the array from here. If we go to P1, oh, okay. I'm not sure why I thought I needed to keep the array, but this is actually much nicer because it leaves us with just the union that we can operate with. So now we just need to transform this data into an object that matches what we expect this function would return. So I think what we want to start by doing here is mapping over the columns that we have selected in this column type. So what we can do is we can say for C in column, for the moment, let's just set that to string. And we can make this really simple. We'll just say C in column. And what I want to see is that we're correctly looping over, if you will, each of the values in this type and turning them into keys. And as you can see, we are. We've got ID is string and now first name as first name is string. So let's see. We know we already have this alias type, which pulls out the alias name. So what we can do now is in here in our return type, we can pass each column name through the alias type. And if we get never, we know it's not an alias, it's just the column itself. And so then we'll use that column name. Otherwise we can use the return type. C in column name, and we can say as alias C. And if alias C extends never, uh, then we use C, otherwise alias C. Now does this work? Let's see. Generic type alias requires two types. Okay, we had the column name. Oh yeah, and then the string itself. Ooh, interesting. Uh, okay, so I think we can change this. At this point, we already know, we've already checked to see that we match the column names. So I think what we can do is say, let's just set this to string. We don't really care about what that first string is. And the reason for that is we've already checked via our columns type here that all of the values already do match actual columns. So we don't need to double check that there, which means we can drop our first argument here. So now we just have some T extend string. And if it matches this pattern, then get me the last part of it here. C in column as alias C. If alias C extends never, then we use C, which is the original type. Otherwise we do use alias C. If we go to person here, we have ID and then we have first name camel case. Excellent. And if we go to product, we have created at and product name. Cool. So in both of these cases, we see an example of a column that is unaliased, ID or created at, and then we see an example of ones that are aliased. Okay, so this could look like we're done, but remember there's one last thing. We don't want to just use hard-coded strings for these values. We want to actually use the values in these types, right? So ID should really be a number and created at should really be a date. Now this should be pretty straightforward. We know we have the tables type and we know that name here is one of the table names, right? So we can do that. And if we do this right now, notice what we'll get. We're gonna get our whole table for each property, which obviously is not what we want. So we wanna go down one level further. And so I think let's start with C and find out what happens. Okay, so type C cannot be used to index type table names. I think the problem here is that C could be one of two things. It could be a column name, which would work. Um, for example, I could hard code ID in here because both of these tables have an ID column, so that works. But this could also be one of our SQL aliases, in which case it would not work. So I think what we have to do first here is check to find out which state we're in. So we could say, does T extend a key of tables name? And if so, do that. And otherwise, uh, let's do never. Okay, we'll come back to the never here, but I want to see this working first. So what we expect to see if I hover over P1 is that ID will be number, first name will be never. And cool, ID is number. Great. So we are pulling the type from the original source, which is good. First name is never. Okay, we can work on that. If first name is never, that means C is actually one of our aliases here. And we have a type here for getting the alias side, but we do want something to get the original name. So let's go ahead and copy this. And instead of alias, um, let's call this, oh, I don't know, what do we call this? Original column name? We'll call it original. If we can uh, infer 
why not we still call it O, I guess. So now we're just inferring the other side of it, which is the original name. Will this work? My theory is no, and here's why. All we're checking to see here is that T is a string, and if we infer O is some kind of string coming out of it, we know O is a string, but we don't know that O is going to be a key of this table. So I think we may have to do the same thing here, where we check to see if O is a key of our table, which can get a little complex, but let's give it a try. We know in one case we return our table like that. Otherwise, um, we could just do tables of name and we'll say original of C. All right, and yeah, this doesn't work because this isn't guaranteed to be a key. So I think we have to do the same check again. Okay, so let's copy this. And so if it does extend, then we know we can do this. Um, otherwise, we can say never. And we know that this should be unreachable uh, because we're checking here that this does match our definition of acceptable columns. So if C doesn't match the column name, then original C should match the column name. All right, let's check this out. Does this work? So if we look at P, we have ID of number, first name of string. And if we look at P2, we have created out of date and product name of string. Awesome. What you guys have seen here is exactly how I would normally learn TypeScript. I like to find these types of problems and then just start breaking them apart. If you're curious about ways you can do this, I mean, if you're using TypeScript libraries, go ahead and find the behavior of the types in there and try and reproduce it yourself in your own projects or just in the TypeScript playground like this. Or if you want something more specific, definitely check out the TypeScript challenges. I'll have a link to those down below. Those are a really great way to level up your TypeScript skills as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I'll probably put this code in a gist and share it so you guys can um, take a look, play around with this, maybe extend it in some way if you want. But Thank you again for watching. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing it means a lot to me and really helps this channel grow. I will see you in the next one.